ever. Yep. Here it comes. Good evening, Sweet World, and welcome to the Bubble Wrap, recapping Monday, August 3rd of NBA action down in Disney World. Shout out to everyone joining us live right now on YouTube. At least we think we're live. <laughs> we might be actually uh, broadcasting in two spots for all we know, but here's what we're going to do. We're typing macaroni tonight in the chat. Mm. <laughs> so if you're typing macaroni, I guess you're in the right one. Uh, much love to everybody listening to the podcast a little bit later, too, on the Athletic Network, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your classics. I'm J.E. Skeets, and joining us here tonight, as always, is Tass Mellis. Some say that the games going on in Orlando are also pre-recorded. Just saying. <laughs> Might not be live. I'm just saying. We also have the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Ayo! Hey, yo. The international man of mystery taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm. Mm. Lee Lee. And last but not least, making this magic happen tonight here on a Monday, JD. Hello. There he is. And here we are. Thanks for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you found us. Um, fun day again in Disney World, whether it was live or not. Who knows? Tinfoil hats on. This was recorded weeks ago. Um, had a couple teams stay perfect today, guys. The Raptors and Pacers improved to 2-0. and So those teams now join the Rockets, the Suns, and the Magic as the only undefeated squads remaining down there in the bubble. But we're going to play a little What You Got tonight. Remember What You Got? It's been mm-hmm. so long. We saw some bounce-back performances on Monday. The Nuggets got their first W. They pulled out the overtime victory versus OKC. The Pelicans got off the schneid. It's always mm-hmm. fun to stay schneid, defeating the team that they're chasing, the Grizzlies, 109-99. And the Sixers pulled one out of their ass versus the Spurs, grabbing their first victory with the 132-130 dub. So, the what you got, Tass, you'll get us started here tonight. Better bounce back performance. Nuggets, Pelicans, or Sixers, what you got? It's got to be the Pelicans. They didn't feel all that good coming into tonight, I don't think. And now they have to feel incredible. And I don't think it even started all that well. Zion Williamson, you know, hasn't been playing a ton of minutes. And then he's going up against Jonas Valanciunas and Jaron Jackson Jr. Just not great for a guy who, uh, you know, just kind of barrels into front lines. And so it didn't look all that pretty. But then the fourth quarter, things changed. I mean, Pelicans, it was a roller coaster. And, yeah, they were doing all right. But Zion wasn't looking incredible. He had played, I think, uh, 15 minutes going into that fourth quarter. He starts the fourth quarter. He gets pulled midway through the fourth quarter. You assume he's done, even though Alvin Gentry said he's going to play eight to ten minutes. You assume he comes out of the game, he's done. But he comes back. Zion Williamson playing key minutes down the stretch, and he hits a couple buckets, hits a couple free throws. He's a nine-point quarter. The Pelicans have to feel alive with Zion Williamson ending up playing about 25 minutes. He had a productive game overall. Like he, he, he was never, never had a play called for him, uh, but he ends with 23 points. He's looking gassed at times, but mm-hmm. looking great at times at the end of plays when you know, things happen, uh, the play starts and he just finds a, he just finds a pass. He just, he's working off other people's actions. So how good do the Pelicans feel with their best star coming back? I know Brandon Ingram looked solid in this one, but Maybe Brandon Ingram can start playing a little less hero ball that Zion, now that Zion Williamson is starting to feel like himself. Because now, now that they have the Kings on the schedule, the Wizards on the schedule, two winless teams, the Spurs, that's their tough game left, and then the Kings again, and then the Magic. This is their easy part of the schedule uh, that they had when the uh, season was canceled. They've got Zion back. Come on, they've, they've got to feel so, so good right now. You guys agree with that? Is it the Pelicans with the biggest bounce back from Monday? It was certainly encouraging to see Zion so in the flow of the offense. And like Tass is saying, it didn't feel like plays were being called for him because that was the complaint I had through the first two games. It seemed like they were just trying to get him the ball because they didn't know exactly how long he was going to be in there. So you might as well use him while you can. I felt it just seemed so much more natural uh, today. And I don't know, I guess I've lost track of uh, the bursts and the spurts and when he's actually supposed to be playing. Cause I thought the rumor was he was going to play at the beginning of quarters only for this game. So who knows what they're actually doing with him, but he looked so much better today. And it was so encouraging to see him actually uh, playing in the flow of the offense, playing alongside people and not just seeing like a, like a new piece they have to figure out rather 
uh, rather than something that was actually integrated. It looked great. Um, so yeah, it's pretty weird to say this is the soft part of their schedule because the schedule is only eight games long, but it definitely feels like things could turn around a little bit for the Pelicans. You know, the storyline arcs are going to be pretty short here in the bubble. So yeah. in a week, uh, things can change pretty quickly. You can mix up the bursts and the spurts. Just don't pull a John B line and mix other things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you think, Lee? Are you going with the Pelicans like these guys are saying, or was it the Nuggets or Sixers to you? Yeah, well, they've covered pretty much everything. The key storylines there out of that Pelicans game. I mean, Zion, when, uh, as you mentioned there, Tass, in that fourth quarter, when he got pulled, he looked gassed, and he looked like he got pulled for disciplinary reasons because he could, he went down and he didn't get up and hustle back on defense. And I thought, as well, I thought, you know what? They're probably not going to play him for the rest of this game, but Alvin Gentry made the right move and made Maybe that was because he learned a little bit of a lesson himself from not putting him back into that very first game where they, they had a chance to win and perhaps that cost them. But, you know, Zion had some incredible moments. Again, he, he gets up, he's got that outstanding athleticism, but one thing he will have to learn is sometimes he does just burrow into that, into that paint without really knowing what he's going to do. And that's something that you just learn in time because when you're in college, you can go up against other kids and just sort of bulldoze them out the way, but you're going up against a big body like Jonas Valanciunas. It's, it's harder just to push those guys out the way and to get the ball up over your head. So that's something he will learn, but a very, very important win for the Pelicans. But I thought the Sixers almost blew this one uh, against the San Antonio Spurs. And I didn't think it had to be that close when Joel Embiid has y- uh, Jakob Pertle on him. He can just go down there and score 50 points if he wants. Um, Jakob, he works hard. He tries hard. But there was a couple of times where Embiid just, it was just like he was flicking off a fly and he went inside there and uh, and just could have, he could have done that the entire fourth quarter. And uh, I don't think anyone could have stopped. I mean, if I was Greg Popovich, I would have maybe put someone like Rudy Gay on him just who's a bit bigger, a little bit stronger because uh, Pirtle was just getting pushed out the way. That was like, you know, young Shaq where he would just go in and just, it wouldn't matter who was on him. He would go in there and do that. And then, I mean, it took an incredible shot there from Shake Milton to uh, actually get the win for the Sixers, but another impressive fourth quarter from DeRozan getting the the Spurs back into this game. And it looked like another Spurs just going to win this game. And and with the Grizzlies loss, put even more pressure on the Grizzlies, but uh, big shot from Shake Milton saved the 76ers because Ben Simmons was not good today. He fouled out. He was in foul trouble uh, pretty early in this one anyway. And uh, when it sort of just the way we've seen the Spurs lately, you just sort of think this is another way they're just going to pull out this victory. But uh, Philadelphia got one today and man, did they need it. I know it's uh, sacrilegious to uh, question pop, uh, but (laughs) what are you doing at the end there when you're, you know, 10 seconds left, you said you're, you're, you're leading by two. The Sixers are down two. You just got to take away the three. Like, that's really what you want to do. Instead, they do the opposite. I mean, Murray just sits on the entry pass to Joel Embiid. And, okay, they're trying to take away, you know, high-low action. I get it. You think they're going to go to Embiid, but he ain't going to be shooting a three. It's going to be a two. And you just left. Shake Milton, who's a pretty damn good shooter. I mean, he's a 40% shooter, really, from distance. He hasn't been in the league all that long, but he's solid. Guy was wide open. I didn't really understand the reasoning on that one. You take away the three and, uh, you know, again – do your best to front and be, do your best to throw a second guy at him, but don't leave a, a guy that can knock down a three pointer and step right into it completely open. It wasn't, it wasn't like that was a hard shot is what I'm saying mm. for Shake Milton. I mean, it was in rhythm, knocked it down. Kudos to him. But uh, I thought that was strange. I guess the, the Spurs just thought it wasn't going to go to him and it was going to go back to MB. Maybe. Uh, I mean, who knows? Yeah, I think uh, was, he was sitting down in his lap, you know, it was a wide open shot. Uh, Great shot, though, for Shake Milton to come yeah. back from, you know, getting berated by Joel Embiid to then being like, yeah, of course I made it. Of course I was going to make it. The way he walked off the court after hitting that <laughs> shot, I just thought it was so baller. Yeah, I think I think Murray was supposed to come back to him. I don't think he was supposed to just hang out in the lane when, there, when the ball wasn't there. Uh, but, it, it, yeah, he obviously didn't get out to the three-point line, so it was, it was a mistake. I think it was on Murray, but who the heck knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Shake Milton – didn't even expect the ball to come back to him. So maybe Murray knew that the ball was supposed to go in the post because it looked like a surprise that he got it back from Al Horford. He looked a little shocked. Uh, but yeah, he went to the bench with that great face, as, as Trey mentioned. Uh, I think it's the the team with the prettiest eyes, this this uh, this squad. We talk about Al Horford, uh, <laughs> right, Ben Simmons. With Al Horford, yeah. Ben Simmons is up there. I think and maybe not prettiest eyes, longest eyelashes. I don't know if you want to measure, but I think Shake Milton's part of the club. <laughs> uh, Pop, as uh, you mentioned Pop there, Skeets, Trey, you ridiculed uh, or questioned. We're questioning Pop two shows in a row here. Last show 
for a, an untucked shirt. Same thing today, but it's black, so it w- looked a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, it, it definitely it looks better out. in black for sure. Uh, just you know, black is more slimming. Everybody knows that. That's why I, I'm not going to be out here wearing a white tank top. I'm wearing a black tank top, so it looks <laughs> like I got pecs. <laughs> the Sixers definitely a lot of their guys Shake Milton included played so much better in this game than they did against the Pacers um you know he was good Josh Richardson I thought was good Cork Mass Cork Mass was good Al Horford did remember that he's a professional basketball player I thought he was much much better in this one too still has those sexy eyes got to put them to use uh and you talked about Embiid Lee like just going to work on Pirtle they started the third cur- third quarter where they just they just fed him the ball mm. and it ended either with him scoring or here comes a double and he just kicked out to wide open threes and they knocked down a couple and he got to the free throw line. They were feeding him, but I was like pulling my hair out. Sixers were down two, two minutes to go. And Simmons, I think had just fouled out at that point and they didn't go to Embiid. Yeah. And like yeah, obviously yeah. a huge part. He doesn't even touch the ball. He doesn't even yeah. sniff the ball. And you're like, what are you guys doing? And then I think maybe it was Tobias Harris, like jacking up something that was ugly. It wasn't even close, mm-hmm. but then, was, yeah. you know, I was like, Oh my God, what are you guys doing? Like he's having yeah. a great game. That's a mismatch. Go to it, feed him. Even if he doesn't score, he's going to find someone open the next three times they went to him and Embiid hit a tough fade away. Then he picked up a nice dime to a guy cutting back door. And then he got back to the free throw line though. He did miss one. So just that one possession, but I was like, what are you got? Every possession should be going to him down the stretch here in a yeah. close game. But, uh, they got it done. What do you think about the Ben Simmons finger roll? Did you end up uh, tweeting that one, Lily? <laughs> I did see that. That was uh, that was like when you jumped too early for your layup and you're not quite sure what to do. In the end, it went in, looked beautiful, but yeah. uh, he did not mean to do that at all. You don't think, think that was the plan? <laughs> I don't it think so. It looked so no. graceful. It did look graceful, yes. But mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah, that's the thing with Simmons. He does that too often, too, where he gets caught in the air. And often he passes in that situation. But in this case, he thought, well, why not just like let that one just roll off the finger? So. It uh, almost he almost didn't let it roll off the finger. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really actually a finger roll. <laughs> Bit of a finger pop. Yeah, yeah he just popped yeah. it up there. You're like, all right, I'll just throw yeah, that up yeah, in the air and let it drop. But it was pretty. Yeah. He was uh he was pissed when he got that sixth foul coming back yeah. on defense. He, I think he threw his gum out of his mouth. No, or I thought something. It, uh, mouth guard, was wasn't it? Mouth guard, yeah. Does he have a mouth guard? I don't know. Mm-hmm. He played with now one. that you say it, I'm not I sure. I thought it was a big yeah. wad of gum, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guaranteed that's a violation somehow. We're going to yeah. get a memo from the league about it. Keep yeah. your gum in your mouth, people. Exactly. Okay, so Sixers. And uh, anything about the, the Nuggets? I know they're, we're going to come up a little bit later, but just one thing about them. Uh, you know, that's a good win, too, because who they were playing. Mm. And what I mean by that is there was – what, like something like four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. OKC was up seven. It was their game. Uh, and they were going to stay perfect uh, in the bubble. They, We all know they're like, they lead the league in like clutch minutes. Chris mm-hmm. Paul's money down the clutch. Usually their three guards are amazing. Now they're missing Dennis Schroeder who went, he left actually the bubble to uh, be with his wife for the birth of his second child. But they're, they're just good down the stretch. So for the Nuggets to pull that out was pretty damn impressive. Monte Morris was huge in the second half. He had 17 and it was funny. It sort of went from like Michael Porter Jr. Okay, you're the guy right now. Then Morris was for the stretch. And then it was Jokic in overtime. Yeah. Who was, uh, he was hitting bucket after bucket in, in overtime. I think he scored eight of their 10 points. So that was a big win too uh, for the Nuggets. I know it's not. It was an impressive first, uh, eight in overtime as yeah, well, yeah. Skeets. Let's not let Lee Ellis off the hook here because <laughs> I saw Nikola Jokic run over Steven Adams, one of the stronger guys mm-hmm. in the league, despite being skinny. And I saw him bringing the ball up, pushing the pace. And I saw him going around Steven Adams. And I saw him shooting fadeaways over Steven Adams. It's almost like being in shape is helping him out there. <laughs> he uh, that, that overtime was impressive because Steven Adams is usually hard to just get out of the way. But he had Nikola Jokic had no problem with him. And he hit that sort of weird Dirk, <laughs> that, yep. that one where he hops oh, on man, the wrong yeah. foot, <laughs> throws it a mile in the air. And it just goes, through so cleanly it's unbelievable but yeah a couple of those other moves he just uses that sort of um unusual style that Jokic has to get the ball up without it sort of being able to be contested uh, and he did that to Adams a couple of times and then he had the little I think it was like a float or like a hook shot in the lane as well fantastic performance from Jokic today so he doesn't need uh, the entire month to get himself ready he just needs a couple of games by the looks of it because uh it, clearly his best performance since arriving in the bubble he always dominates Stephen Adams his Foot speed is actually a lot faster than Steven Adams. I think Steven Adams needs to learn from his uh, Olympic meddling sister how to shot put because his feet need to get faster. He cannot he cannot <laughs> handle Nikola Jokic. And shot putters don't get enough credit for how f- fast their feet are. I've said it before. <laughs> I'll say it again. Uh, and I just want to... 
that that was fun to watch. It was a good game. I just want to jump back really quick to the the Sixers because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it's such a Jekyll and Hyde team, and they play two such such different styles. And I, I know that uh, you know going and beat obviously is key, um, but it's just so telegraphed when they go to them, and they're, everyone's expecting it. And then you know they run some counters, and then Embiid's in the high post finding Harris down low for a beauty little uh, tip in, and, and and Simmons, and they play that way, uh, but it was almost a nicer experience watching Al Horford, the ball go through Al Horford and Al Horford needed to get going. And I think that's how Josh Richardson got going is because they're playing sort of a two man game when uh, Horford came out he didn't have an incredible line, but he's plus 17 and and Josh Richardson had a terrible game the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, And he's just not really all that involved. He's not a ball handler. a, A lot of the time in the first unit He's the fourth option. And so he came off a four point game and he's playing with Al and, uh, you know, he only had five shots on this night, but it ended up being 19 points and he hit a big fourth quarter shot, I think, because he had that that two man game. It's just so many. It's just so different. It's just watching. All right. We're all going to stand around, throw the ball to to Joel. Sure. Um, and, and then the other guys, you know, the talented guys don't get involved. And that's why I think you had a bad backcourt performance last time. Joel's numbers fall off this time, but everybody gets a little bit more involved. And then the, the defense is. I think they they probably played better last game um, uh, against TJ Warren's 53, but now they've given up 127 and 130 points. So uh, that's not the Sixers defense we all expected. So I don't think, yeah, they pulled it out, um, but they can't feel good. Well, we had a few career highs today, guys, We um, but I want to know which one was better. Let me throw two at you. Fred Van Vliet's career high, 36 points on the back of seven made threes in a win over the Heat, or... Talked about it briefly here. Michael Porter Jr. for the Nuggets, who popped off for a career-high 37 points on 12 of 16 shooting. Van Vliet's career-high, MPJ's career-high. What you got, Lee? Oh, this is a tough one, actually, because both were very, very impressive. 37 points on 16 shots for Porter, 36 on 16 for Fred Van Vliet. But I'm going with Freddie Van Fleet because I think today he was the best player in that game by a long way. Whereas Michael Porter Jr., as great as he was, I think in the end, Jokic was probably the better player for the Nuggets. Um, And Fred, man, in that third quarter, I think he had 18 points in that quarter alone, hit some big threes and really just sort of kept the Raptors, kept that lead for them. You know, Miami made a big push and Fred was just incredible. He penetrated inside a couple of times, but answered every challenge from the heat and was just incredible. And it's so funny talking about Fred because I actually forgot he's an unrestricted free agent Mm -hmm. after this season. He's not restricted. I always sort of thought he was restricted, but he's not. So uh, the Raptors, Raptors may not be able to keep him because I think. Oh, teams... I'm convinced he's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like because that guy's going to get paid. He's a damn good. Bat- I mean, he's really good at the point guard position. He can play both great. guard positions for yeah. crying out loud. Gives it to you defensively as well. And why wouldn't the team like a Pistons, especially the Pistons, maybe the Knicks, but really the Pistons? Like, <laughs> you could use him. You yeah. throw money at that guy. He's not at old, and yeah. uh, he's not going to get. He's not going to get worse. That's the thing. Van Vliet just won't. He always bets on himself. If anything, he's just going to actually get better. Like, Mm. I think he is ultimately going to be gone from the Raptors. I was tweeting that out today. I'm like scheduling my tweet saying I miss Van Vliet (laughs) in 2021 because I think uh, one of these teams would be silly if they don't throw a lot of money at him. Yeah. I think I think teams just constantly underrate him too because there's not there's no flair there's no drama to his game he just goes out and gets the job done he can hit the three he can penetrate he's a very very good defender too very underrated part yeah. of his game he's as tough as anything not afraid to take those big shots and uh, yeah he 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 today I thought as I said earlier was the best player on the court and uh, and steered the, his team home to victory I mean you know other guys are good Siakam was good as well there for the Raptors but uh, this was Freddie's game and he deserved it and those seven threes every one of them seemed to be a dagger. Get too. It just it just sort of felt like oh man he's hit another one mm-hmm. here. So uh, I'm going with Freddie. Okay, what do you uh, Trey? What do you think, Michael Porter Jr. or Freddie? I mean, I do think it's Freddie, but Michael Porter Jr. was really great. And, you know, Jokic does end up being the star because of the way he dominated in overtime. But there's not an overtime, really, if uh, if Porter Jr. is not putting up some points. And the thing that's impressive, I think, as well, is 12 rebounds. That's nice for Michael Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. Also, 43 minutes, a career high there. The guy's barely played over 20 minutes in his career, like 15 times, maybe. Uh, so for a guy who missed an entire season to come out and be playing 
key minutes, big minutes in games that actually matter a little bit, I think you have to be encouraged because that's always been the question is, can Michael Porter Jr. be reliable enough this season that it raises the Nuggets ceiling? I don't know if that's the case, but uh, but it's encouraging to see him really shining. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll throw some love in for Freddie Van Vliet uh, because Michael Porter Jr., phenomenal, huge jump, right, from uh, – from what his career average was 25 before, I think. And so a big, big jump. Freddie is just consistent. Freddie. Uh, he is just so freaking good. I, I forget that he's playing 36 minutes a game uh, this season. He is an absolute rock. He's leading the league in deflections per game. He's, he's tiny. I don't know how tall he is, uh, but he's, he somehow gets in the way on the defensive end at all times. Uh, you know, four deflections as a game is no joke. And, uh, and, I truly believe, uh, you know, it's a dumb prediction, but if the Raptors get to the finals, still underdogs, uh, but if they get to the finals, performances like this are going to give Fred Van Vliet the MVP if they somehow, somehow pull what? it all out. Yeah, yeah. So I you're think- saying if the Raptors pulled off the back-to-back miraculously down here in the bubble that Van Vliet, you'd be, there'd be seven Hubies, eight Hubies giving him the finals MVP. <laughs> no, but, there, but in this case, eight Hubies. <laughs> yeah, in this case, it's, it's not a Hubie of yesteryear. It's not a Hubie of last year. This is mm-hmm. These are deserved votes that okay. I'm imagining in my brain because there's, you know, there's nights like this, that his backcourt mate, Kyle Lowry just didn't really have it going from the floor, just hit two shot field goals from the floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, yeah. And, and Pascal is going to be the guy that t- other teams take away. Why am I imagining a Raptors? Show? <laughs> this <laughs> is fascinating. It's, it's ridiculous, but, uh, but uh, you know, the bucks are still the favorites, but uh, you know, they have looked, uh, a little bit mortal these first two games they mm-hmm. definitely have been and the Raptors have the 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 recipe but on the offensive end is the worry with the Toronto Raptors and somehow this guy um, just bailed him out with with really really big shots he was an absolute monster tonight yeah I saw a bunch of people tweeting this game was really enjoyable I thought for the yeah. first game especially of the day heat Raptors that you have um, like two teams that are obviously talented, Lee, but they're scrappy too. They play their ass off. Oh, so they yeah. have the underdog mentality to them, but they're also really, really good, talented players. Like there's a lot of guys out on the floor that can make things happen. And when you mix those two together, uh, that talent and the scrappiness, it's like, it really is awesome. It makes for great basketball to watch. The classic Miami Heat team just out there, just fighting every single possession. Any any player who's out there, whether it's Tyler Hero, Bam, whoever you want, you know that they have to earn their uh, stripes on the defensive end. That's the Heat way. You know that that's what they do. It sort of comes from the from from you know the start, and it comes from the top. And that's just what Miami basketball is all about. That they're going to keep on fighting. They're going to keep on battling all the way. Every single player on that team understands. The defense is where is, is the sort of identity of mm-hmm. uh, Miami Heat, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good game. It was a scrappy game, um, and it's funny. It just feels like the Raptors though seem to have the Heat's number now. I don't I don't know what the, well, the Heat had is. beaten them twice this year. That's oh, is that right? Happy. It just it, I don't know. It it, uh, it felt different out there. It just sort of felt like the Raptors were. Hey, in we've already imagined a championship <laughs> a few <laughs> months in the future. Who knows what happened? In the I, past. You know, like <laughs> by the but the problem is again though when these games. I think it was a one o'clock tip off. This that was you know nearly twelve hours ago. You watching it it's fresh you're like okay i'm gonna be ready to talk about it by the time we get started i'm like oh my god what the hell happened in that game i can't remember uh, well, yeah no you're not wrong i know one thing that happened and, I, and I'll, I'll make this prediction uh when the raptors three peat um uh, mvp will go to og Ad- adobe let's call him og uh, yeah. Yeah, trey is he joining the uh, photo shoot boys that's the real question is og in let's see what his clone stamp game is like you know that let's see what he can magnetic lasso How's his fills? You know about a gradient overlay? Only time will tell, but I'm ready to induct a new member. You know, we need somebody to make some graphics around here. We've shared a phone charger. Let's share a license. Yeah, I mean, look, if his uh, Photoshop skills are half as good as his defense, then he's going to be the best <laughs> Photoshop boy there is, man. Uh, you know, you're no slouch. I mean, I'm pretty garbage, but he'll be the best. Uh, he if was his awesome. portfolio's as thick as his thighs, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He, uh, I mean, just the his just versatility, versatility defensively is wild because he's guarding Bam for a good chunk of this game, at times completely shutting him. <laughs> down he's switching out onto all their shooters he's you know he's blocking guys that are shooting threes he's just awesome and and you're seeing a buzz for it already you know we're joking about the finals mvps for Freddie van vliet and og two years now but it's like og has a legit case to maybe be a back or excuse me a most improved player 
um, for next season because you saw a little bit <laughs> offensive repertoire. <laughs> so Are you guys kidding me? You we don't like think him. so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just how get through this season, man. He's going to be so much over the summer. You can already tell. I mean, he is. Look, uh, his handle is infinitely better than it was at the start of this season. So, I saw yeah. him shoot a layup today that he hit the bottom of the rim. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can work on that. He's got yeah. lots to work on that. No, <laughs> he, he crossed mean, somebody's ass up today. And he had like, some yeah. great well, highlights, you don't, you, you but don't uh, really have that. Yeah, he's um, he just he definitely has the star potential, right? You can foresee a future where uh, the handle comes together, the finishing comes together, and maybe gets hot from outside as well. And you're bringing that with the defense, and you're making yeah. an all star game. You're talking me into this here. Talking me into hit me with a home or somebody, please. <laughs> hey, look, hey, game. look, I'm saying it's more realistic. OG will win most improved next year than Fred Van Vliet winning finals MVP this year. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That's a new what you got. Oh, uh, man, but yeah, that was a really, really great game uh, between the Heat and Raptors. Actually, let's stick with it for our next one here. The ending of that game, 17 seconds left. Heater down one. Drogic passes through the lane to a cutting Jimmy Butler. And it goes out of bounds. Oh, Jimmy fumbles it. It's out of bounds. They take a look at it. And it was off Jimmy. Kyle's right there. Then the Heat down two, seven seconds to go. A Butler pass to a cutting Dragic. Yeah, we flip it into the lane. And that results in another turnover. And uh, Van Vliet really heavily involved in that one. So let's just put them both on Jimmy because he's the star player on the team. But what was the worst Jimmy Butler turnover? Was it the Butterfingers one or the bad pass to Dragic? What you got, Trey? I'm going with neither. It was the exact same turnover. And that's why I'm giving this one to Eric Spolstra. Yeah, Jimmy Butler was involved with both of them. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens when the clutch plays come down to a bunch of moving parts. You got a guy in Jimmy Butler who doesn't shoot the three ball well so people can play off him. There's a lot of tight windows. You got to play it perfectly. And it didn't happen on either of those possessions. And it was kind of the same thing. A pass just wasn't perfect. And therefore, it's able to get deflected. That's why come playoff time, you give the ball to Jimmy Butler and say, everybody get out of the way. At least we're going to get a shot up here. That's important. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll get to the line. Maybe he'll hit whatever step back it is. But uh, getting a shot is better than throwing it to the other team or throwing it out of bounds. Yeah, I think yeah. that uh, that first one where it, it hit Jimmy's hand and went out of bounds, I think Kyle Lowry got away with some pass interference on that play because as the ball was coming, I think he hooked the arm of Jimmy Butler on his uh, the hand that didn't touch the ball. But we don't have a good enough camera angle. Mm-hmm. The robots aren't doing a good enough job to get a really close view on that. So if we had a human sitting there underneath the basket mm-hmm. with that with their handheld, I think we would have got a better shot. I think we would have saw Kyle yank his arm back. And I think that's why he totally dropped the ball. I mean, the ball was in his bread basket, but he didn't have another hand uh, to come through. I'm surprised he wasn't angry about it. And maybe I'm totally wrong on that one. But uh, yeah, it's supposed to ran a couple of cuties uh instead of just giving him the ball and and letting it rip it was it was just weird to see that first one absolutely just hit hit his hands and he was probably going to score that too (laughs) i think like yeah Yeah. nice cut it was right there at the rim we know he can finish that um i don't think kyle's actually going to challenge that one i know kyle lowry had a chase down block uh or sort of chase down block you know what i mean on tyler hero but uh i don't think it's out of the question that he wins defensive player (laughs) i do i do think deflections all of it together i do think uh, butler was going to score there though i really do if he caught Mm -hmm. it but uh my old high school coach lee mr nye may he rest in peace he always said it's always the passer's fault always and i'd be like what are you talking about i put it right in brody's hands right under the rim (laughs) and he dropped it out of bounds Uh, and he goes not he said hey did he catch it i said no he dropped it then it's passer's fault Mm. it's your fault man that would always hurt but there's some truth i think to that which one is it lee well it's the second one because uh jimmy made a bad pass you know he didn't really have fully control of that possession earlier right so he was trying to grab it and he maybe took his eye off the ball but that second one he had the ball he made the pass freddie van vliet was there again making the defensive stop so i think again when when jimmy has the ball in his possession it's up to him to make the right decision and and i don't think he did so uh, I, i'm going to put it on that one um and again we we i think Again, you can put a lot of that down to the Raptors' defensive pressure, you know, that Jimmy oh, maybe yeah. felt, felt a little bit of it and, uh, you know, got rid of the ball and, and they were right there. And it's funny because there was some contact there. 
And sometimes you see that called as well, especially the way sort of Fred puts his hand in there. But um, I'm glad the refs didn't call it because I don't think there was a... Yeah, they uh, call everything else down in the bubble. Yeah, I, I, know. <laughs> I feel like in the bubble, I don't know, maybe Kevin Pelton knows, uh, the fouls <laughs> seem to be through the roof right now. They seem to be calling way more. I don't know if that's true or not. No, but they are. Feel, I think there were are? some numbers out. Yeah, that it was like yeah. something like... Um, I actually think it was like 10 more fouls per game. Oh, it per feels game. like it. Yeah. It feels like it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So getting back to the point, I, I think that um, I think that the, the Raptors defense sort of created that. Jimmy panicked a little bit, maybe just didn't make a good pass, mm-hmm. but he had the ball in his possession and and maybe should have shot it, maybe should have made a move, done something else, but uh, he didn't. And uh, in the end, the Raptors pull out this vict- victory. Yeah. Pull out the Vic. Uh, Vic. Pull out the Vic. <laughs> Pull out the Vic. <laughs> Never heard that one. Um, this is what uh, this is what Van Vliet said after the game about the the deflection where Jimmy throws it to Dragic or tried to. I saw Jimmy coming back. You know he likes to base cut there, so I just try to be another body at the rim, and then I saw Dragic make his cut, so I just tried to beat him to that spot, and I was able to get my hand on it. So sort of saw the play happening, and yeah, got yeah. a got a mitten there in the deflection, and and nothing was called. There's contact for sure. There's contact contact on all these plays, but. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think that one was a little more tough to stomach, especially it, it's later in the game too. I mean, it's another 25 seconds after the first one and it's still a two-point game. They're either tying it up or hitting a three. All right, anything else from that game? Because I got one more question for you guys. And that is, as we discussed, the Grizzlies fell to 0-3 in Orlando today. The Jazz, right before we jumped on here, they dropped their second in a row to the Lakers. Which team are you more concerned about? I know they're in different spots here. You know, the Jazz in the middle of the Western Conference. Grizzlies holding on for dear life to the eighth seed. But which team are you more concerned about? Who wants to get us started? I can get us started. I'm definitely more concerned about the Grizzlies. I'm not sure they've got a winnable game on their schedule the way things are going. It just seems like they don't have scoring and teams are ready for them here down in the bubble. And so they're taken away what they want to take away. And Jaron Jackson Jr. has got a body on him. Uh, they're allowing Dylan Brooks to let her fly. Uh, they're taking away the lane on John Morant. They're giving Jonas a shot. And at this point, we'll find out uh, which team we should be more worried about because they play each other on Wednesday, uh, the Grizz Jazz do. But after that, they play the Thunder, Raptors, Celtics, and Bucks. And they're sort of lucky that the Spurs lost today. So their uh, spread is still two games between their – them in the eighth seed and the ninth seed. Um, but, you know, you pick them skeets to uh, make the playoffs and take a couple games off the Lakers. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like they can win a basketball game. It, it, I mean, they fight. Uh, they definitely, they come back third quarter. I think Taylor Jenkins is an inspirational coach because every third quarter they came out swinging. They've got a, a good scoring rate. I looked it up throughout the regular season. I said, this team this Taylor Jenkins guy, he gets them going in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they do have a good scoring rate uh, you know, towards the top of the league. But they ain't scoring all that much. And, um, you yeah. know, they, they definitely are – they're missing guys. Uh, they're missing a ball handler. And uh, I, I, are they going to win? Are they going to win a game? I mean, I'm, I'm definitely concerned. So if they didn't win a game – they could realistically not even be in the mega bowl. That's what we're, yeah. Right. I mean, they could be 10th or 11th or something like that. We could have a couple teams uh, jump right up there, be it the Pelicans or the Spurs, or even who knows to take an eighth and ninth team and they would not even be involved. That would be insane. If that happens, I still mm-hmm. have some, uh, some, some hope uh, in them holding on to an eighth or ninth. Yeah, so I think they sure. can win. I do. Cause they are scrappy, but you're right. I mean, everything you said there, they can't hit a shot. I mean, John Moran is really struggling to score. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I think he was one for 10 today, if I yeah. have that right, from three. And yeah. he's barely hit any while he's been down there. Um, yeah. Doesn't want to shoot in the first half. He's he's always yeah. been – he was 0 for 7 in the first half from three. He, and they're just, you know, sagging off him and, and taking away everybody else. So, yeah, no choice, really. Yeah, mm-hmm. Grayson Allen kept him in the game in that yeah. first yeah, he half. Had he had five threes. Five, yeah. Yeah. He's five actually threes. played pretty well for them the past couple of games, just yeah. actually being able to hit a shot off the dribble. But uh, they're looking really young right now, and it's looking like the mm. pressure of having to actually perform in these games to make it to the playoffs is getting them to uh, getting to them a little bit. I mean, they got to win a game, though. They can't be the team that goes 0-8. <laughs> that would be sad. Yeah, yeah, there's four teams that don't have a win yet. The Wizards, yeah, that makes sense. The Kings, okay. The Mavs, huh? And then the Grizzlies, and that's uh, disappointing. I, I mean, I, I tweeted the other day, Tass. I'm, I'm not even mad at the Grizzlies. I'm just disappointed right now because, uh, uh, you know, 
we've seen them play better. I also wonder too, if this team more than a lot of other teams because of their youth, maybe, and their great fan base that they really miss a home court sort of advantage. And like the, the you know, that, that the, the pop you get from your own team, the crowd, they maybe do, but at least I guess if you step back and say, well, these games, these eight games leading up to a potential play in tournament or whatever, they're like playoff games, I guess. I mean, these are like reps for them, especially against good teams. Cause like you said, Tass, they have a really tough schedule. They like a lot of good squads here. Um, so that's good, I guess. I mean, you get in these close games. We said they could have been easily, you know, at least two and one uh, if they'd won those first two games, which were winnable games for them. Even this one was sort of like, it was there. There's mm-hmm. no doubt. They get some stops. They hit some threes. There's a chance they're, there's, there's a weird chance they're three and oh, but they're obviously not. They're 0 and three. So that's at least good, right? Trey, they're just getting reps for young guys like Jaron Jackson Jr. and John Morant and Brandon Clark and all these guys because they sort of are playoff like games. Yeah, it's not the playoffs, but as close as you can get, especially after coming back from four months off to come back in and have to play the highest pressure games you've played in your career. It's it's great to to get any sort of reps. No doubt about it. Build a little bit of a winning culture. It's even crazy to me when they showed Taylor Jenkins in like 35. I try to act like I'm young around the other guys because they're all older (laughs) than me at a right 36. But uh, that guy makes me feel old, too. So I don't know. He was looking trim, though. He was looking great. And maybe you're right, Tess. Maybe uh, maybe he is an inspirational guy. He gets in there talking about how to pull out the Vic and then the Grizzlies go out there and figure it out. (laughs) Hopefully they can actually pull it off. But if not, it's still a learning experience Mm. uh, to figure out how to score when things are not going well, because the score 99 points. Uh, in a bubble environment where it seems like it's 150 is the average. <laughs> right. Pretty bad. I'll yeah. tell you what, though. Jaron Jackson Jr. continues to impress with uh, a, few, a variety of moves. Again, he didn't shoot the three all that well today. I mean, it does, it's not the prettiest shot, but he's going to take it. But you saw a couple of times when Drew Holiday was up against him. He's like, all right, yeah, I, I can just shoot over him. You know, mm-hmm. even though Drew's an experienced guy, a great defender, brilliant defender. But Jaron Jackson's like, I've got the advantage here and I'm going to take take that advantage. And then another drive inside, dunked it with his left hand and a couple of moves around the paint. Like he can get his body in there and finish nice and softly around the rim. So uh, they've got a very, very bright future with him and Ja Moran and, and whether or not Dylan Brooks is a part of that as well. So yeah, th- this season for the Grizzlies, best case scenario, they make the playoffs and win a game. Worst case scenario is not that bad. You know, they, they've mm-hmm. got plenty to look forward to going uh, going forward because they've got some good players, really, really promising players. Yeah. So they're... And, and, and ahead, an- another guy is Brandon Clark, who is phenomenal off the bench, just as their springy guy uh, to get some dunks. But uh, you mentioned Taylor Jenkins making you feel old. Uh, I always feel old looking in the mirror, seeing my gray son... Allen, uh, why why not put him in for Kyle Anderson? I know there's obviously they played sort of different positions, but Grayson Allen is handling the ball pretty well. Kyle Anderson is not adding a ton offensively. They can just play off him. And uh, they have a pretty big front line in Valanciunas and Jaron Jackson Jr. anyway. So, yeah, you lose some, some inches, but they need some dynamic action. That's why Grayson Allen, Brandon Clark, they got to play a lot. Uh, I, I think, you know, if you're, Grayson Allen is balling out of his head. Uh, but yeah, he'll give us some up on the defensive end, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. The Kyle Anderson is just not adding a ton offensively right now. No, that's true. They need a, they need a backup point guard. I mean, they're missing Tyus Jones, right? Who's, who's out with, uh, with injury, I believe. I don't know what actually he injured though, but he's, he's, he's on the bench there, but yeah, need Justice a, Winslow would be awesome. He I would mean, help. He would help Kyle Anderson's place big time. He mm-hmm. is. I mean, that's that, that core, when you start to look at it with Morant, and Justice Winslow and Jaron Jackson Jr. Then a Brandon Clark is, yeah, here we go. That feels good. That feels hey, better. Dylan Brooks only shot 13 times today. <laughs> and that's a win. I thought there were many times watching this game after watching him in the first two. I was like, okay, you would have shot that in the first two. So you either somebody talked to you, Jenkins, maybe your teammates, or maybe you just had a long, hard look in the mirror. And uh, we're like, okay, I'm not Kobe here, man. I got I to gotta get my shots more in the flow. Five of 13, he's still, you know, two of seven from three, but. He fouled out in this one too. He's trying to give give you some defense, but a little bit better. He wasn't as trigger happy with the What's shop. different about his release? There's something a little about oh, Brooks' release. Yeah, it's just a little something. There's a little it's just <laughs> it's unique. I don't know if mm. it's like his. I don't know. It's it's just like a it's like a projectile arm that flies out there. I don't know. There's something going on with that right at the end of it. I don't know. Mm. Thought you might. Not, I thought you might be on it, Lee. Through? Yeah, Lee. What He's is what falling the shot through? Yeah. But it's. I yeah, know. I know what you mean. It's it's a little herky jerky at the end there. Eh? Yeah. yeah, it's just like yeah, he just fires it at the end. Yeah. It's like get out of get out of my hand. I don't know. Yeah, 
Well, well he's going to keep shooting it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lots more on tonight's bubble wrap up. First, a quick word from one of our new sponsors. Hey Lee, uh, let me ask you a question. I know you love watching Aaron judge sock dingers. Have you ever thought about having a drink out of a baseball bat? Uh, no, I have not. Never. Well, now you can, thanks to Dugout Mugs. Dugout Mugs is a company started in a college baseball dugout. That's where they got the name, Lee. Dugout mm. Mugs. They take an actual wooden baseball bat. They take that bat. They turn the barrel into a 12-ounce mug. Everything, Lee, is licensed by Major League Baseball. So you can get your favorite team laser engraved on a birch wood baseball bat barrel mug. You can get a Yankees dugout mug, Lee, for when you're watching Aaron Judge sock dingers. <laughs> but it's not just that, Lee. You could get an Aaron Judge dugout mug for when you're watching Aaron Judge sock those dingers. It's perfect for the biggest baseball fan in your life. And for me right now, apparently, that's Lee Ellis because he's telling me facts about Aaron Judge that I didn't know. And I'm looking them up. And they're actually right. The guy's on fire right now. No surprise. Lee Ellis has the Midas touch. And that's why he recommends and I recommend Dugout Mugs. Right now, you can go to dugoutmugs.com slash The Athletic and use promo code MLB30 for 30% off your first purchase. That's dugoutmugs.com slash The Athletic and code MLB30 to get your very own Dugout Mug today. And start watching people sock dingers the right way. <laughs> Dugout mugs. Yeah, it's a real product. <laughs> that should be their tagline. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed this was a real thing if you hadn't sent me the link, sent me the photo. It's a legit baseball bat turned into a to a cup, into a mug. And actually, you know, if you're a baseball fan, pretty cool. I'm going to start drinking out of a basketball. <laughs> like a punch that's bowl it's a, a way bigger drink yeah. uh but yeah this is nice you know some of them yeah it's just the barrel you're just talking about a straight up barrel but others they're gonna lave it down oh. so if you want to drink your wine skeets i know you're a wine guy get the wine version get no, the wine I, version for i'm drinking a super buck tonight <laughs> yeah. oh. refreshing super buck. throwing that in a blue jays dugout mug you think? <laughs> oh that'd be oh, nice man. i would love that um, just, just looking at Judge, he's, uh, yeah, he's socked six on the year, 14 ribeye stakes and 10 runs. I mean, he's batting 290. 290. He didn't hit a – he didn't sock a dinger tonight, though, right? Streak's over. Uh, that is, uh, I didn't, are they playing tonight? They're, in, uh, they're, in, they're playing Philly you tomorrow. you a baseball fan, man. Yeah, no, know. You know, yeah, I think they play Philly. We got a, oh, we I, got thought a they, I thought I saw somebody say he didn't hit a homer today. Hmm, I, could, I, don't I could think be so. Wrong. Okay, well. Let well, me well. just check. All right. Well, you, well, uh, while you check, Lee, while you check. Uh, let's get back to some NBA talk here. Some NBA news from today. Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer and Thunder head coach Billy Donovan were voted the co-winners of the 2020 National Basketball Coaches Association Coach of the Year Award. Raps coach Nick Nurse was reportedly in third, uh, just one vote away from creating a three-way tie, but it goes to Bud and Billy. Um, and just a reminder here, someone tell Kendrick Perkins because uh, I don't think he knew. This is not the main coach of the year award. This is the one, you know, voted <laughs> by, by the coaches. This is not the media. That one will be announced later, and Nurse will very likely win that one. But uh, was anyone surprised by the split here of the coaches you know, giving it to, to Budenholzer again? I think he won it last year by himself, and then Billy Donovan, and not Nurse. Anyone surprised? Well, I mean, uh, Lemmy Hulls are understandable, right? You know, they're the best team in the league. They've had the best record the entire season. You can say, you look at Giannis, he's a guy that's improved from an MVP season. Of course, that's an easy vote for somebody who could win coach of the year. And then when I see that uh, Billy Donovan has gotten so, so many votes, uh, half the coach of the year vote, I just think congratulations to Chris Paul on winning another coach, a coach of the year. He got one for Byron Scott a hundred years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's a coach on the floor out there for a reason. He'll help you turn around a team instantly. Uh, but uh, Billy Donovan, for sure, was more of a surprise than Budenholzer. Yeah, I don't blame Kendrick Perkins for not knowing what the coach of the year. I mean, I, he should know. But <laughs> he's when, in the media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, he can get by without knowing. But, you know, when you see these awards come through, do you actually know what they are? Obviously, we you know, we are very much in the know. But for the casual fan throwing or the, you know, he's, is he a casual fan? I uh, know, but it, <laughs> nope, it's, he's in the media. <laughs> what is this? What is this award? 
I mean, I, I it's just you, the coaches. It's, it's like, it's like yeah. the Golden Cheers. Globes of Coach of the Year, basically. Yeah. I know, I know what it is, but I, I mean, I'm, I've already forgotten about it. I mean, you said last year that he was, he repeated. You didn't remember that, did you? You had to see it. I mean, it's. Just <laughs> I think I read it somewhere. Yeah, that comes through on the Twitterverse, and uh, yeah, I do. Uh, and it was a very, very close vote. Are we going to see the votes? Is it like the uh, the awards where Ooh, we get? Oh <laughs> no, no! But I would yeah, like to yeah. because you gotta assume there's some uh, favoritism happening in here. Like, hey, I'm buds with this coach, not Bud. <laughs> buds um, with Bud. But I'm gonna give him a vote. You know, yeah, we play golf every once in a while. He taught me a thing or two out on the links. I'm gonna throw him a vote. You know that's going on. It sounds shady. What's going on over there with these coaches? Let's see the votes. You're damn right, Tass. I want to see the votes. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta see the votes out here. It's an election well, year. What were you going to say, Lee? I thought you had something to say there. Well, there's a, there's a few coaches that do have a pretty strong claim this year because, uh, you know, that this this award tends to go to, you know, the guy who has the best record. So that's Budenholz who's done a good job. Billy Donovan, no one really expected the Thunder to be that good. Nick mm-hmm. Nurse, no one expected the Raptors to be that good. You could even make a case for Frank Vogel having a lot of pressure and delivering on that. <laughs> mm, what about know, this so, guy? What about this yeah. guy? Exactly. Let's play. Exactly. You're always that's complaining about it. most improved player <laughs> as the worst award. This is the worst award. Yeah. Coach of the year. We see like the smallest portion of anything a coach actually does and you can make a case for 25 coaches every single season well, all those guys got votes uh, the, uh, vogel got votes Good. taylor jenkins got votes Nate Good. McMillan, eric spolstra brad Good. stevens reportedly yeah. got votes so. so what so what happened this so budenholzer and billy donovan won this with what four votes each <laughs> like five votes maybe six tops it sounds like uh, i don't know i'm saying i'm saying eight names if i'm adding them all up correctly Ooh, wow okay so it didn't take many to get this thing or to tie. So what do they do with the award? Do they share it? They send it back and forth? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, uh, I wonder what they would do in that case. Well, Probably. I've got the I've got the Webby right now. Ah, <laughs> so it's my, it's my time with the Webby. Uh, I don't know who's up next, who's driving over to pick it up. <laughs> I think they're taking it across the country doing an Instagram photo tour. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Do you think Tom Thibodeau likes. got a vote for the Knicks? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, if we see Billy Donovan taking a bath with this coach's award, then it'll be worth it. And then we see Boone Boonholzer lying down in bed with it. With awesome. a great boot face as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The press release even had a great mud face. It was awesome. <laughs> He's already had a couple of great ones on the sidelines. Like it's amazing how he gets that look. That's great for the audio listeners. Yeah, I, just was... did a, I just did a great bud face. Oh, you can imagine. I think. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. All right. Uh, final news here uh, from the bubble today. The NBA has adjusted its protocol for players who return inconclusive tests for COVID-19, allowing for a quicker possible return to game action. After entering quarantine, if a player is asymptomatic and tests negative on a first retest, he will now be permitted to play in his next game, as long as there's another negative test returned within 60 minutes of the game's start time. So as Woj wrote, there was sort of like a growing concern task that the league's playoffs could be compromised with a, with the sidelining of somebody because of these unavoidable, you know, coronavirus testing glitches. Uh, apparently every five out of a thousand tests can be inconclusive. So there could have been an incident where that would happen and keep somebody out. And the NBA is trying to get ahead of this and saying, well, you know, these things happen, these glitches happen, maybe we can catch them and you can still play. What do you think? Well, they definitely have the, uh, the rapid results machine. If the negative test can be, uh, can be administered and, and you get the results within an hour of the game. I mean, that's pretty great. The guy's warming up and he takes a test and he can just get the results like that. Uh, they've got the rapid results. The rest of the country, I suppose, uh, doesn't, but that that's, uh, it doesn't, I mean, to me, I, I hear every single one of these reports and every one of these changing rules, and, and I, it just washes over me because the NBA hasn't been all that transparent about everything going on. So I, it's, it's hard for me to, 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 you know, to really take in this story and take in something else and then hear that Jimmy Butler wasn't at practice yesterday, but we don't know the reason while Jay Crowder was sort of hinting that he had a negative test or he had something going on with the coronavirus or an inconclusive test, but it wasn't revealed. And so other guys coming into the bubble late, uh, we don't know about their injury status. We don't know why they're not playing. Uh, and, and we don't know, we don't know dates when guys are coming. So there's a lot of uh, opaqueness. And I think there's a reason behind that because they just want to handle things. They want to, the way they want to do it. 
Um, but I'm, I, so I, I find it a little bit, uh, I don't know I, what, what the word is here, but I find it sort of pointless to get um, into any of these stories and try and, and try and make sense or try and uh, divulge anything from it because I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And I don't think anybody really does because there has been a bit of a lack of transparency on, on reports from guys. Yeah, I agree with that. And like you, the first thing I thought of was the Jimmy Butler scenario um, and how he was mysteriously missing from practice. And Jay Crowder dropped uh, the quarantine little bit of info. And then this news uh, came out following the, the news regarding that the league had sent more and more masks to players and enforcing the masks around everything. And you hear all of those three things kind of pile up one, two, three right next to each other. And you're like, hmm, OK, this is about Jimmy Butler. Who knows? But then in the Woj story, they mentioned the Sacramento Kings player who had tested inconclusively and then was eventually cleared to be playing in the game. And it's like, we're hearing secondhand about all of this stuff as it's happening. And you can tell that the league is having to make decisions as things are happening. And as they're learning more and more stuff and getting more and more information and becoming more familiar with the protocols. But clearly we don't know actually what is going on and it doesn't really feel like they're going to be telling us anything about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, before this protocol change, there was the whole thing where you had to have like a two day period of time that required these two negative tests um, within the 24 hours before you were cleared to then come and play. I guess what they are saying, if you believe them, I mean, I don't, I, I guess you're going to hope that, you know, Woj has given us what he knows and what he's being fed is correct. Um, is that, yeah, there, these, there, there are mistakes made with these testing. They're not perfect. So when that happens, well, geez, LeBron, uh Oh, you test positive. What? I am? What the hell? And then it's like, well, sorry, you're going to have to do this 24 hours. You may have to miss this game. Well, the idea is like, we can nip that in the bud. We can get ahead of it and just, we can now do these tests because it's got to be all written out. The, the rules have to be there. They have to be clear enough for the, at least pe the people there. So all teams are playing on the same page. No, do this. And as long as you, you know, pass these twice, then you're good to go. You don't have to wait this, you know, longer window. I, I think that's, that's the whole point of all this. It's just because we've found out that that test the first time isn't, always 100 percent accurate rightly yeah i guess so i mean i'm guessing though as well that while that guy is waiting for the result he can't be around the team though right either right like yeah. he can't warm up Well, that's so exactly he, it yeah yeah so he would have to if he's doing it 60 minutes after a game he would have to warm up or 60 minutes after the game started oh hang on no what was that one 60 <laughs> minutes before the game 60 minutes before the game yeah he would yeah, have that's... to be away from the team right up until that point yeah, which I, is strange. I guess, I, yeah, yeah, I hear. Yeah, that's that. That part is strange. I, but, I just I think this whole thing is sort of fluid. Period. Yeah, that's okay. what I think as well. And I think Adam Silver said that as well. That they don't really, no one really knows exactly how this is going to play out. So far, they haven't returned a positive test in what five hundred cases or whatever they've, they've, that they've announced to the media. So I think in this case, maybe they're feeling confident that the testing is working. There hasn't been an outbreak, so perhaps you know they don't need the forty-eight hours if they can get more testing done within that twenty-four hours that returns a negative. Mm -hmm. that, something like that anyway but um yeah it's 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 been working for them but i guess they just don't want anyone to be uh to sort of take their foot off the gas a little bit and that again i think this jimmy butler thing i didn't see anything today either exactly what happened but i'm assuming again with that memo they put out yesterday reminding everyone to to keep washing their hands and you know, wearing the mask and thing like that i think it was probably something related to that and maybe this was the first time where he had to take that test and within uh, 24 hours, it was like, okay, it's returned a negative. So he's okay to play because yeah. he had to be on the out of the team roster last night at 5.30 p.m. And he wasn't. So I guess they they, they sort of left that door open a little bit. And, uh, and he passed it this morning or, or whenever he last took that test. Very, very wild times that we're even talking about this yeah, on a basketball podcast. But yeah, so far, so good. Knock on wood, honestly. Um, I just think this is, yeah, the whole memo and everything like you guys are saying. There's no doubt, I'm sure, everyone would be guilty of it, correct me if I'm wrong, that people just start getting a little lackadaisical, yeah. right? With how, you know, serious they're taking everything, wearing the mask here and there and washing your hands and doing all that. And because they're in a bubble even, and they're like, well, uh, everybody's testing negative. We're all good here. And like, probably, yes, but also keep it up because it's working. So everyone, you know, remain vigilant with all that. So maybe that's why the memo, I don't know about the Butler thing. I hear what you guys are saying. It's weird timing of everything, but I do just think they're like, damn, they found out this, these five out of every a thousand things can go wrong. The glitch, they're like, what happens if honestly a star player, especially forget whoever it was on the Kings, like a star player in a playoff game 
our protocols say right now he might miss that game, even if that was just a, you know something wrong with the test. Can we work our way around that? And I think that's why they then announced this. That's my, my, my take on the whole thing. But let's hear from you guys out there. Let us know. Email logical, us, no. man. You are logical. Well, that's I, true. I, just, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the I way to break it down. I mean, that's definitely what the, the message is. Uh, and things have been going incredibly well. I, you know, ha- listening to you guys, I have a flashback of a couple months ago, thinking about the, the seating games and even the, the, the training camp little period that they had. And, and the fact that uh, things have gone this smoothly after transitioning from multiple cities and seeing what's going on in baseball where uh, there's outbreaks on two teams and this has been, yeah, virtually seamless other than, you know, the criticism is, Hey, they're not the most upfront about absolutely everything, but at the sort of the same scenario when they came out with this uh, memorandum was that they are going to uh, administer and, and run things the way they want to run it. And we put, uh, you know, some of us put some blind faith in them and mm-hmm. so far so good. So far, so good. That's right. All right. Little bit, little bit. Fancy line of the night. Honorable mentions to the Joker. 30-point trip dub. Big line. Michael Porter Jr., MPJ, FVV, AD, all the guys with great <laughs> initials tonight. Yeah, Anthony Davis. I mean, it was him or this other guy. AD, I think, finished with 42, 12, and 4. Uh, I know we were starting to go live right while that Lakers game was wrapping up. So monster line. But I'm going to give Woe Boy once again to TJ Warren. Because he had another massive night. It wasn't 53, but 34 points, 14 of 26 shooting. Perfect from the line, Lili. I know you like that. Five of five. Only hit one three tonight. 11 rebounds for TJ Warren. Thought that was a typo. Four assists. And then this. Three steals and four blocks. (laughs) That's ultimately why I gave it to TJ Warren over Anthony Davis. The guy put up a seven in the uh, defensive categories there when it comes to fantasy. And that is... uh, that's pretty damn impressive. That's a hell of a line. Yeah, it was against the Wizard, but yeah, TJ Still. Warren going back to back here with the Woe Boys for I don't know, yeah. man. Play. AD was oh, AD was tough. The guy looks <laughs> yeah. like he's the best player in the league right now. Um, and you're right, the the defense was there statistically for TJ Warren, but Anthony Davis hit four threes, man. Yeah, I know, I know. That's hey, look, it was close, man. It was close. Here's why: I really wanted to give it to TJ Warren, so right after this show, I can tweet out. Corey Brewer could never. And then at the Ringer NBA, <laughs> at Pat Muldowney. And yeah, TJ Warren can get buckets. He just did it in back-to-back games. That's the only reason I actually went with him. Mm. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, guys, Brogdon also returned. We didn't say that for the Pacers. He had a good line, 27 and 6. All right, let's get to tweet of the night, Lili. Yeah, well, uh, interesting, interesting, interesting day because it started off uh, pretty early. Howard Beck had a, uh, a little nice back and forth with Nickelback. Believe it or not. Uh, yeah, there was a tweet that started yesterday. Nickelback. Yeah, the Liquid Lincoln Project <laughs> tweeted out uh, a photo of those shitbag Trump kids and said, name this band. And Howard Beck said, Nickelback. And Nickelback said, try another career. Comedy's not for you. And he said, great, maybe I'll try sports writing. It's working out pretty well. That's a great tweet. Doesn't win tweet of the night, though. Um, we also had another tweet this afternoon come in from, let me just confirm his name here, the Jiggly Guy. Okay. Which is uh, which is Jiggly <laughs> Boy? Excuse me, Jiggly Boy. Um, he is the guy in Minnesota, of course, who we were referencing the other day, uh, who was getting up and jiggling when KG came back, and uh, he's you know he's been doing that for for years apparently, and uh, he tweeted I'm a boy all- into a man, but somehow he's still called Jiggly Boy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he tweeted all of us and said thanks for the heads up re GM job for Garnett's Wolves preparing for a little for a dance filled interview. So that was a great tweet, but then the winner. <laughs> Has to come from oh, Joel Embiid because uh, after the game tonight, when Shake Milton hit the big shot, and you remember jo- Shake and Joel got into it on their very first game. Well, Joel, being Joel, we know he loves getting on social media, and he tweeted out this tonight uh, after Shake hit that shot. He said, Shake came up to me before the game and said, It became personal for me, just like Mike LMAO. Nice shot, young fella. Hashtag the process. And he, and he attached a photo of him giving Shake a, a, a hand up from the ground from an earlier in the season uh, moment. Milton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, that, and you know what? You know what? I'm going with a little bit of bias here because I picked um, Joel Embiid in one of our drafts for my uh, favorite social media um, NBA player. And that's why, because Joel has been quiet, but you know, 
when there's a moment after a game like that, whether it's, you know, sometimes he gets into it with his opponents. This time he's doing it for a teammate because he knows it was a bit of a blow up. He's smoothing it out. That's just classic Joel. So well done, Mr. Embiid. <laughs> excellent. Excellent stuff. Thank you for taking us <laughs> that to was a great tweet, tweet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was... mentions tonight. That will be a great tweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I had it with Howard Bex this morning because it came out. I thought, oh, sweet. But uh, no, we uh, we had some other one. good ones come through. So That's that was why great. you said it was interesting. Four times. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. There was a lot of interesting tweets out there. Too. Look at this favorite tweet. <laughs> um, pick them results from, what day is it again? Monday. Yeah, that's Oof. right. Uh, it was the Grizzlies-Pelicans game. It's actually Tuesday technically now, but uh, it was the Monday game. Grizzlies, Pelicans, Pelicans were favored by four and a half and they got the job done. That's a win for Tass. That's a win for Lee. That's a loss for Trey and a loss for JD. That's not my loss, JD. <laughs> That's on you. Um, so I'm three and two. Everybody else is two and three. We got a nice little race here. Tass, what's our game for Tuesday? Yeah, later today, we've got a six-game <laughs> sked starting nice and early, 1.30 Eastern on NBA TV. They've got a double header on NBA TV. But uh, I'm going to go late on the schedule. Okay. TNT doubleheader. And the final game of the night, a good one, Houston and Portland. And Portland, obviously, uh, they need some Ws. Mm -hmm. uh, coming off a rough one there against Boston. Tough loss. Looked like they had that in the bag. And they're five-and-a-half-point underdogs against the Rockets, who have had two very close victories over uh, the Bucks in that last one and and the wild one where uh, James Harden sort of missed a free throw but sort of didn't it Robert Covington came out of nowhere and scored uh, against the Mavs so five and a half points can they cover that man I don't know who wants to go first I have uh, no idea I, 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 I've said earlier I'm never picking uh, Russ to beat Dame so I say the Blazers cover oh. mm. 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 what do you got Trey I'm also going with Portland. Uh, we've been all impressed with Yusuf Nurkic so far. He'll have a huge game. You know, there's no big guys in there. He'll be throwing his body around. Uh, so, yeah, give me the Blazers to cover five and a half. Five and a half. This feels like one of the bigger lines you've picked, Tass. I could be right. I think we had one the other night, I guess. We had four and a half, of course, last night. Oh, man. I can change it. I mean, the line no, was fluctuating. No, I, I, can I, make it. It, I can make it a little tinier. <laughs> oh, yeah. really think the markets are watching the live stream? <laughs> I think so. Here I think where the are. big money is. What are you guys talking about? This game has already been played like three <laughs> days ago. It's just going to be thrown on the television. It's not live. These guys are already back That's home. The championship's already been decided. Uh, um, I'm already getting I'm already getting hate in the chat in the uh, YouTube. Someone saying shocker, Lee is picking against Harden. Did, they, did he not just listen to what I said? Uh, that's I just exactly said. why I'm backing that anonymous uh, uh, chatter in our YouTube, and I'm going <laughs> with the Rockets, baby, to uh, win this by six or more points. Tass, where are you going? Well, these chatters are bang on. They know Lee hates Harden. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, 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 and Rohan M says, Tass taking the Blazers, no doubt. You're smart. Yeah, I just don't see a, a blowout. I mean, it's not a six points isn't a blowout, but it feels like it uh, with, uh, with the Rockets. It, they're playing close games. And uh, yeah, I definitely think the Blazers are going to get 1,000 offensive rebounds in this game. Okay, so you're going Portland. Everybody's going Portland except for me taking Houston. JD, just curious, were um, were you watching at all the Memphis Pelicans game, <laughs> knowing you had something riding on it tonight? Uh, even though I had skin in the game, <laughs> <laughs> you missed it, eh? Wow. Oh, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, all right, guys, let's call it there. Uh, let's go to bed. Email us your questions and comments to no dunks at theathletic.com. Subscribe to no dunks. YouTube channel. Thanks everybody that's already done that. Keep subscribing. Keep hitting the likes. If you listen to the pod on iTunes, leave us that sweet five-star rating and review. It helps in terms of rankings, guys. Where are we at? Makes it easier for newbies to find the show. Where Thank you for asking. At? Thank you for asking. A couple nights ago, I was like, what did I say? We were in the 50s or something, maybe 62nd even or something like that. There have been something like 25 to 30 new reviews, Lee, over the last couple of days, five stars, all five stars, only five stars. Oh. We've jumped like 30 spots, man. We're awesome. in the top 30. We're knocking on top 20. So keep, keep them coming. Oh, Give us man. the stars. Give us the stars. And, uh, you know, some of them are hilarious reviews. You, uh, you know what? Tomorrow <laughs> night or one of these nights where maybe we have a lighter schedule, I'll, I'll – like, uh, I'll look at some of the funnier ones and I'll read them on the show here. Do you speak you of are... five star Friday? 
Ooh, five star Ooh. Friday. Okay, we'll do five star Friday. I like that, Trey. Um, so gives keep people going. another week to get those stars in. Yes, yes, yes. We're getting the number one, that. number one guaranteed. Wow, I love that confidence. Okay, let's call it there though. We'll talk to you guys late tomorrow night. Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, for some teams in Major League Baseball, the season is already one sixth over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I like my fractions, but people have played teams have played 10 games, some teams of the 16. Some teams have played like three games. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're really changing it up. <laughs> embrace oh, the night, people. Embrace the night. Go to dugoutmugs.com. <laughs>